So hi everyone, I'm Noed Zufre from the University of Lausanne in Switzerland, and I will present you my paper about wearable activity tracker users' personality inference that I wrote with my, colleague, with my colleagues from the University of Lausanne, Kevin Huguenin and Mathias Amber, as well as Romain Tavenard from the University of Rennes 2 in France. And uh, by the way, this study was partially funded by the Swiss National Science Foundation and by Arma Swiss uh, S plus T. First of all, when I talk about wearable activity trackers, it refers to simple watch-like devices, like those ones, that are generally wrist-worn and that collect multiple types of physiological data and activities. We can consider two main types of wearable activity tracker data. Sources data, that are the raw data that are collected by the sensors in the device, and process data, that are data that are generally stored on the service provider's servers, and that are the main reason for the users to own a wearable activity tracker. Research about wearable activity trackers has already shown that with either the sources data or the, pro or the process data, it is possible to infer different information about the user's health, consumption, or even head movement like uh, what they type of uh, on a keyboard, uh, like we, we've seen multiple times uh, today, uh, I guess. For sure, some of these inferences may be useful. For example, in the case of health monitoring, but they also obviously raise many privacy issues. In that work, we decided to focus on a particularly interesting type of data to infer for an adversary, which is personality. We choose personality because it's a type of data that can be used in many ways against individuals. Indeed, by knowing someone's personality, one can know them better and therefore discriminate them, or one can also manipulate them more easily for example, for targeted advertisements or political propaganda. In that work, to assess personality, we decided to refer to the Big Five model, which is considered um, as one of the most uh, used and robust personality measurement model by the psychological community, and which considered that someone's personality is composed of five personality traits, which are Openness, related to aesthetic feelings uh, or ideas. Conscientiousness, related to how you tend to be ordered. Dutifulness, self-discipline. Extraversion, related to uh, excitement seeking, warmth, um, or how you tend to go to others. Agreeableness, which is related to trust, altruism, or compliance. And neuroticism, related to bad feelings as hostility, depression, or anxiety. So to conduct our experiment, we collected user data in summer 2020 and recruited participants through a dedicated institution at our university. The participants were paid approximately, approximately $100, and we provided them with a Fitbit-inspired HR device that they could keep at the end of the experiment for personal usage. We collected their data for four months during the, um, the summer 2020. To participate, they mainly had to not already own a wearable activity tracker. We mainly asked them that uh, because in that way, we ensured that they will indeed use the device we provided them. And um, they also had to own a phone that was compatible with the Fitbit mobile app as we collected their data through the Fitbit API. Also, they had to answer a personality assessment survey so we could collect the grand truth. In total, we recruited 230 people, mostly students from our campus, and at the end of the data collection campaign, we only kept data from 204 participants who were chosen who wore the device at least 50% of the time. Approximately two-thirds of them were women, which is kind of representative of Fitbit users in 2020. And we can also see that their personality traits are bell-shaped distributed. 
Then, we collected for four months their wearable activity tracker data. We only collected processed data and not raw sensors data because it was more convenient for us as we could use the Fitbit API to collect them. And moreover, to assess the raw sensor data, an adversary would generally need physical proximity with the device at some point, while processed data are far more easy to uh, collect, especially for third parties. So we collected the user's step count in the form of a time series as the number of steps taken every minute, their heart rate uh, that were in the same form, activities like uh, walking, running, swimming, and so on, sleep data, like uh, at what time participants uh, went to bed, when they wake up, uh, when they fall asleep, and so on, battery level, and their gender, which was available on their public profile. Then, with this data, we computed multiple features to train a machine learning model. To build features, we decided to divide the days in six different four-hour periods. For each of these periods and day of the week, we computed means and standard deviations corresponding to one given type of data. For example, we defined features like the average number of steps taken between 6 and 10 p.m. on Mondays, or the standard deviation of heart rate between 2 and 6 a.m. on Sundays. We also defined, we also defined other types of features, like, for example, the total number of time one given activity was detected. Using all these features and the ground truth of the participant's personality trait, we decided to train a model in a supervised way for ternary classification of each personality trait. That means that the goal of the model is to classify a wearable activity tracker user for each personality trait, either in the low, medium, or high score tercile. To train and evaluate the inference model, we use the leave one out nested cross validation with an inner loop to select the classifier, the hyperparameters and the features, and an outer loop to compute the classification accuracy. Finally, we compare the result with the random baseline, which is basically 33%. According to the results, we show that it's possible to infer three of the five personality traits significantly better than the random guess. By proceeding to a feature analysis, we also find out that openness is particularly related to heart rate, extraversion is particularly related to step count, especially step count at night, <laughs> for obvious reasons, I guess, and neuroticism is particularly related to sleep, step count, but also gender. We also tried different feature combination to see how removing a given type of data, for example, heart rate data, would impact the inference accuracy. By doing that, we showed that step counts only are sufficient to significantly infer extraversion and neuroticism better than the random guess. But without heart rate, our model is not effective anymore to openness inference. Finally, we propose a countermeasure which may be convenient for some users who don't attach much importance to the fine granularity of their data over the long term. The idea is to aggregate time series over time. Indeed, heart rate and step count time series that we collected have a granularity of one minute. But if, we, if the users have the choice to aggregate data by hours, days, or even weeks before sharing it with the service provider or a third party, this would in a way obfuscate the data and probably decrease the inference accuracy. Indeed, if we aggregate time series like step count by days, we are not able anymore to build features, for example, um, to build features for different period of time in a day and so probably lose important information about the user's behavior patterns. Here, we show that if we aggregate all the data by days, 
the model loses essential information and is not able anymore to infer any of the five personality traits better than random guess. So to end this presentation, here's some takeaways. We use ternary classification to infer wearable activity tracker users' personality traits and shown that three over, the over five personality traits can be inferred with statistical significance compared to random guess. And we propose temporal aggregation as a countermeasure, which is quite effective obfuscation technique related to personality inference. Thanks for your attention, and don't hesitate if you have questions about this work to ask them uh, me now or later during the coffee break, or have a look at the paper uh, with that QR code.